Hi guys, welcome back. Welcome back to another review of Gallivant. So today we're in the third episode of our Gallivant series by myself and of course the delectable and rather wonderful Mr. John Snow, the fabulous guy from the north. John is of course more famously known as Scented Snowdrops and you'll find him over on Instagram, loveliest guy in Fragcom and he's just hit his 4,000th subscriber on Instagram. So go over there, give him a huge congratulations and if you love a good friendly but informative fragrance review to read daily then follow him because he always delivers that without fail. On to Gallivant, so today we're on episode 3 of our 8 part episode collab. So just a quick recap, of course Gallivant is moving. The Gallivant is of course a fantastic fragrance house created by Nick Stewart and he created eight fragrances to suit the urban explorers. Week one we covered Tokyo, last week we covered Amsterdam and this week we are doing Brooklyn. So Brooklyn is of course a borough in New York. Um, actually I'm not even going to pretend that I know anything about Brooklyn because I've never been to America so I know that John will deliver in any kind of geological factoids trivia because that's what he loves to do so I'm gonna leave that part of Brooklyn with him no pressure John so I've been wearing Brooklyn for the last two days I do have it on my wrist today and I also sprayed it a couple of hours ago just to give myself a reminder and to have it all fresh in my memory so here we are here's Brooklyn actually let's go back Brooklyn is described by Nick Stewart hang on Brooklyn is described as the fizz of an urban playground and it is a fresh citrus musky fragrance. It has notes of lemon, orange juice, magnolia, transparent flowers and musks. So this fresh citrus musk is fresh and citrusy <laughs> and a bit of musk. Brooklyn really has lemons in its heart and in fact it wears its heart in its sleeve pretty much. I need a visual aid, I need visual aid does open up like a lemon sherbet exactly like a lemon sherbet it is just fizzy it's effervescent it's fun it's playful it's bright and it is so fizzy and it really is all about the lemons after about 10-15 minutes the bubbles just start to fizz out the bubbles kind of fizz away slightly and they just start to get softer and then up come the other notes orange juice just to sort of round out the citrus a little bit more the magnolia and transparent flowers are starting to lift up and soften out the citruses and then the musks I think start to bring a really lovely fluffy underbelly yeah it becomes quite soft almost cotton wool like but there's always that memory of sherbet where all that fizz was originally a big burst of bubbles perhaps fizzing in water the fizz now becomes this much more mild sherbet quality and then gets softer and softer like finely milled lemon powder about half an hour in you're going to get to the base and that base scent wears for about four hours on me it, it disappeared after about four hours it's really all about the lemons now lemons can be really hit and miss with me I genuinely don't steer towards lemon fragrances that's just a personal preference um, I have associations of lemon with so many products around the home so many different types of things that I enjoy other types of fruit in fragrance. The only lemon fragrance I do happen to own and love is Clouds Illusion by 4160 Tuesdays. Now that is a very fluffy, powdery type of fragrance. It has a heavy orris root base and that really does work for me. I really enjoy that fragrance. This one dries down to something reminiscent, just a pinch of it, just a hint of that kind of scent very easy to wear it's very easy to like unless you hate lemons I don't see how you can hate this fragrance it's so easy going but a happy-go-lucky skip through the streets of Brooklyn on a summer's day light of heart and totally carefree it's clean without being a cleaning product and that fluffy sherbet end makes it happy and bright and smiley so yeah a, a sweet charming fluffy little lemon fragrance light sillage at least on my skin that's how it performs but very likable so that is Brooklyn and there I leave you. I will leave you in John's very capable hands. He will now continue the next part of the video with his own review. John also gets the fun task of choosing our next destination. So I wonder where we'll end up on our next trip. I hope you've enjoyed today's review of Brooklyn. That is all guys. Take care. I shall see you on the next one. Okay, thanks Lizzie as always. Okay, so it's, it's my thing on Brooklyn. Um, 
What's, what's quite interesting again is me and Lizzie see the same things, kind of have the same kind of vibe with it. However, we both um, focus on totally different things. I'll get into that. She's left me with a Brooklyn fact. I don't know much about Brooklyn, even when I've, I've kind of looked. But I have some little facts. I'm from Brooklyn. You okay, doll? That's my terrible impression because I don't have a lot to say about the place. But anyway, Brooklyn is obviously next to New York. Apparently, technically, it's not a city. It's actually a county because of some ancient thing never been changed. I say ancient, I mean 800 years old or so. It's part of Long Island. It's on Long Island, but it's not actually a borough of Long Island as such. That's quite interesting. The baseball team are called the Cyclones. And of course, it's the home to the, the wonderful, fantastic, flamboyant perfume god that is Carlos Brooklyn Fragrance Lover. Okay, that's pretty much all I know about Brooklyn. So the fragrance. Now Lizzie went through the notes, so I won't go through the notes again. But for me, it opens up. Uh, in fact, I'll spray a bit. Okay, so. Right. It opens up with a fresh, kind of, straight away to me, quite smoky, but very fresh orange. This is where me and Lizzie differ massively with this. I don't get much lemons at all. I seem to get a lot of orange. And then the smokiness and the depth kind of comes in quite early to me and it's a kind of smoky at first like a like chimney smoke now I guess this makes sense to the kind of what the fragrance is about I've never really lived in an urban space I'm totally a kind of countryside boy even now I live in quite a small town the biggest places I've ever visited are, I've, I've been to London but just for a weekend and obviously I've been to Manchester quite a lot but they're not on the same scale as somewhere like New York and Brooklyn. So I imagine that smoky kind of feel is, is in the air a lot in these big massive urban sprawls. But anyway, yes, as it kind of develops, it's like a big bag of oranges, like you've just bought them from the supermarket or something, and I get like a hint of a bit of green in it. Now that might be some of the florals. And then... Um, as it sort of develops a bit more, it does change quite quickly on me and then kind of stays the same, if that makes sense. But yeah, it, it, that's not a bad thing, no criticism. It reminds me also of a, of a tumble dryer freshener sheet thing I've got, like you chuck in the tumble dryer and it makes your, clo your clothes smell all fresh. And I think I've got one that smells of like, it's called Orange Grove or something, and smells quite a lot like this. Now, like Lizzie says, there is a bit of a fizz in it. And it literally reminds me of um, this dib-dab sherbet thing. I'll put it up somewhere. And um, which sherbet is like this sour, fizzy, powdered sugar stuff that we get in the UK. I don't know if you get it abroad. And it's got like this weird stick thing, like a, um, like a candied stick thing that you dip in. And you like suck off the fizz off it. Um, it's very nice and it's very, you're know, like a bag of sweets, isn't it? With, with that smoke in the air. It's very fresh. And even after maybe an hour or so, as it kind of ri gets richer on the skin, it, um, it has more, how do you describe it? It's not heavy, but again, like the other, it's got more depth. Maybe the you know the woods sort of give it a bit of a, a depth, and again I get amber, but not a strong amber. It's just that richness at the bottom of it. Um, there are a lot of notes in it, most of which I didn't get, but that's that's not to say they're not in there. It's just the blending is obviously really good, like with all of Nick's fragrances. This is an absolute pleasure and delight to wear it's a lot of fun it's it's just one of them fragrances you, you chuck on and it's on a hot day and it it's fun 
it's quite juvenile but again not in a critical way you know it's quite skipping through the park having a laugh having a good time i did quite like this fragrance it wouldn't be top of my list because i'm, I'm not as we all know I'll, I'll be a liar if i said i don't really go for citruses and the kind of sweet ones but it is very very nice it's just like a a fruity slightly floral warm fragrance in the end and that fizziness and that pop it makes it a lot of fun so i do like this fragrance but it's not my favorite so far so next up we've got to choose the next fragrance okay here's the remaining ones and what i also want to say is is nick you're you're a bit of a genius with all the different ones i'm never likely to go to to brooklyn and that but i'm kind of kind of glad i've got that sense of what a big urban space plays uh, smells like and also the concept of the, the, the urban playground yeah it's where little people are having sweets and stuff anyway i'm <laughs> waffling on the next one that me and lizzie will be doing is this one which is istanbul i wanted to save this one till last that's a bit of a spoiler but let's see how it goes thanks folks <laughs>